Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm doing some late night uh, Mylar bagging and I thought I would take you along with me. So welcome, if you're new, my name is Tori. I do prepping on a budget here on my channel and I would love it if you hit the subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up because it's really helpful. So getting into it, I have a lot to talk about. I kind of wanted to do it while I was working with my hands. It's just easier for me to be natural and chat with you in that way. So yes, how are you all? I hope you're all doing good. I have a bunch of stuff that I kind of just want to start putting back. So we have the pasta from Costco and I want to put them in some mylar because we just have an abundance of this pasta. And this is the organic pasta from Costco. It's a pretty good deal. It's under $10 and um, you get how many? How many do you get? Eight, uh, eight bags of these. So eight one pound bags, which is pretty awesome. So I do have a variety of sizes of Mylar here. And then I have my oxygen absorbers. I just have this little pack here of, there should be 10 in here. Yeah, should be 10 in here. They're good to go. And then um, a pocket knife. And then I have some rice that I wanna do. So I have all this rice kind of like burning a hole in this plastic and I really don't want it to be in plastic anymore. So that is what I'm doing. I'm just gonna put like four pounds in each bag and go from there or maybe I'll even keep them in these two pound bags I already have four pounds so just be it might be easier to do it this way but yeah I don't know I think that's all I wanted to really cover today I did want to just like kind of bring something up about King Supers we went and got our groceries let me count these out quick and I'll get back with you okay I'm gonna do the uh pasta first and I take them out of the plastic bag because I just don't want them in there I've seen people do it uh with the plastic bag which is a little confusing for me but uh you mean I mean do whatever you want to do but back to King Supers which is Kroger everywhere else but I wanted to kind of talk about a sign that I saw I took a picture of it I will leave it on the screen here let me know if you have this in your Kroger okay I'm gonna put two uh bags in there and pasta is one of those indefinite but uh you know what how do you feel how do you feel about that okay I have a feeling this is going to be loud so I'm going to try and do this really quick and kind of chat with you in between but what I was saying is Kroger has that sign up and they've had it up you know a couple of places not just the produce and it's not for me <laughs> I know some of you may feel like this but for me it's not an I told you so moment I although I want to do that so much when people tell me that there are no shortages but it's more of a wake-up call I'm hoping that like the average person sees it. And I'm not saying that I'm not an average person, but you know, it's a, it's a wake up call for myself too. You know, it's something that I have been talking about for three years now. And I feel like food shortages have just been around. They have been happening all around us. And we've talked about a variety of factors, like why it's happening. I mean, it could be an inflated price. It could be weather, which is what the sign says. It could be problems with, you know, the trucks delivering it. Just kind of what I wanted to talk about today. We all know that decision was made in New York um, against someone that, you know, not a lot of people like apparently. And the truckers have now said that they are not going to deliver anymore. I don't really know the logistics of it just because I didn't want to go down into another new scene and be negative because honestly, this whole trial like thing with him really, really bothers me because at the end of the day, no matter how you feel about this man who isn't necessarily that bad in comparison to uh, other people that I have seen run for political parties. I mean, like he's pretty mild. You know, here's the problem about this. And this is where I've always stood. I, I'm a female and maybe some of you can relate to this, but I am offended by men often, uh, really often, but I kind of just shake it off and go about my day. I'm not saying that's the world that we need to live in, but there are so many amazing men out there that just make it better so just because one man said some locker room talk I don't know 30 years ago doesn't mean that this is your opportunity
opportunity to completely forget about the future of our country and just vote because you don't like somebody. And there's also some other charges that have been brought up. But if you really look into those trials, I'm not saying he is a perfect person. And I truly don't know what went down. And if I had a dollar for every time I've seen this man in the headlines lately, I would be as rich as him. But I just am so sick and tired of this divide because at the end of the day you can hate the man but there are probably going to be two candidates uh running and you cannot sit there and tell me that the other one is better i i hate to be like this angry person on youtube i'm really not trying to be i am so livid off of what i see lately from i don't know friends sometimes i see family post things and i'm just disgusted i i i really want this divide to stop and i talk about rfk all the time you know i love him and I, I'm hoping, I'm pulling for someone like that. I'm pulling for someone that actually has the American people's hearts in the right place. At least we think so, right? I have so many friends that don't vote because they think it's rigged and I simply can't give up. I, I'm not gonna give up like that. It's my right to vote and I'm gonna give it a shot. And at the end of the day, I don't think we truly know any of it, if anything's true. But the last election, if you don't think that that was rigged, then you need some serious digging. You need you need to do some more research. And I've been just running into this issue in every aspect of my life, except for I feel like being a stay at home mom. I don't really get political when I'm talking to my kids, but I have just been in this funk the last couple of days with people just throwing mainstream media headlines at me saying that I'm incorrect, which is fine. At the end of the day, we don't have to agree on everything, but I will tell you this, your credibility in the conversation or in general as a person goes way down when you say, I looked at Google and the first article said this or fact checkers said this, like that, that does not help you at all in the conversation that we're having. And I feel like people like that are starting to get weeded out in my social media, but just talking to someone face to face, I don't always bring it up, but I know a lot of people like to talk about politics nowadays and I really don't like to but here we are. I'm in it to win it with this channel and it seems to be the most popular chat, the most popular videos that we have here. So here I am just giving my attempt at a neutral opinion but I have just been so sick and tired of the deniers or of the people that just look at something in social media and just go with that, you know, without even looking into the credibility of whatever source they're getting it from and striving me insane. I am a millennial. We've talked about it before and we have always just been taught to cite our sources. I don't know if it's the generation below me. There are certainly some people older than me that have a problem with things that I post and they tend to get combative, which is fine with me. I've just kind of brushed it off. But when I am talking to these people, they are generally the people denying every single thing that we talk about. And I have said the term conspiracy realist and I truly mean that from the bottom of my heart because these conspiracies that people talk about are just out there. They're fact at this point. So if you just do some more deep dives, I feel like you would just get a little bit more information. I posted a reel the other day talking about insects and how the administration is currently funding a project for a protein powder company to start putting some crickets into their protein powder. And I had people saying, this article is misleading. They're just funding this to do this, this, and this. I'm like, do you hear hear yourself talking? Do you hear yourself saying that it's okay for the American people to eat insects? There's so many things wrong with those types of statements. Coming into the comments and supporting the use of bugs for protein sources is just absolutely insane at this point. I've even seen people say that's not happening, that would never happen, and no big deal, it's just one study. What do you think they're doing? They're slowly doing it. That is what they have been doing with every single thing that we talk about on the channel. It's just a slow introduction and they start making it bigger, bigger, bigger. For food shortages, for example, we have seen just slow little produce items coming off of the shelves and then we see the bigger staple items. I've seen some issues with certain canning products. We've seen vinegar acidity levels lowering. We've seen problems with soil. We've seen articles saying that it is not healthy for the environment to grow our own food. I mean, the list goes on. 
on. I could sit here and talk your ear off about it, but they're messing with our food sources. They're messing with our water and our air. And if people don't realize that, I feel like they're beyond help at this point. I don't mean to give up on that and I will continue to talk about it on this platform, but if people aren't seeing that, it's not a lost hope scenario, but I pray for them. I really hope that they can wake up to the absolute corruption that is happening in our world right now. Okay, I'm going curly pasta in the one pound bag. We'll see, we'll see. This one always gives me problems. I think it's the curve of the noodle. I could be wrong. But yes, there's always someone on one video asking me, why am I doing this? That's ridiculous. Why would you store food for a long amount of time? You're, you're hoarding food or something silly like that. But look into it more before you make those statements. A lot of people say that they don't have room. Make room make room because I've lived in a very, very small apartment and I'm not really uh, designed forward when it comes to my home, but I found ways to put things in disguise. You can put it in a bucket and then put a blanket over the bucket and that could be your footstool for the couch. It's as simple as that. It does not take that much space to have not a ridiculous amount of food, but enough food to last you in the event of an emergency. So no more excuses because because I've shown you now where to get food for free. I've shown you how to store food in a secret way. I've shown you multiple pantries and multiple scenarios. I will say we are not the wealthiest people in the world. We are doing this on a budget. We're balling on a budget. You are 33, you probably have heard that term before in high school, but I have just been plugging away at what we can get. Kroger always has something free for us whenever we shop. It's just free with purchase. So I've been hoping to find something shelf stable with that, but this week it was tortilla. Are they great for you? Probably not, but I threw them in the freezer in the event of an emergency. All you have to do is vacuum seal something like that, and then you can heat them up and you will have a food source. Everyone prepares in their own way, but I feel like the way that we are approaching this is a realistic way to prep for food shortage. And I kind of wanted to talk about what food shortages are happening just in case you are new. There's just so many different ones. Rice is a big one. We've talked about uh, the export of rice and how India has completely stopped non-Basmati rice exports. And that could affect us because it is going to other countries to bring in that food item. And unfortunately, that price has skyrocketed. So two pound bags of rice are typically not under two dollars anymore and I went back into my videos of last year and I found some at Walmart for you know a dollar nineteen a dollar oh nine a dollar twenty nine and that price increase really does make a difference when you are prepping the way that we do we of course have that rotational pantry that you saw in the last video but we do have our long-term storage we do have some quick items if we need to grab and go and of course majority of our focus is going to be on water and just quick nutritious foods that will help our family in the event of an emergency. So I usually just split the one pounds up here and you will see I'm kind of lining them up on the back so I can put an oxygen absorber in them and then seal them and then label them and that's just like the easiest way to do it for me. So I'm going to do some larger bags of rice I've decided just because we like having it and I did want to say when you are storing your rice and kind of storing it for a longer amount of time I find that soaking it at least overnight in some apple cider vinegar helps my body digest it a little more but this is enriched rice which I'm not too happy about but we're gonna take what we can get like I said I found these at Esh's for I want to say 39 cents something crazy like that because Esh's is awesome if you are in Colorado, I suggest you go. I'm actually gonna go with a friend. I will leave uh, her YouTube handle here. Shout out to you, Brie. We met the other day and we just hit it off. We have so much in common. Uh, she also has a YouTube channel and she does so many incredible videos on cooking, saving money, and just some really great recipes. So definitely check her out if you are interested in that. But we are gonna head to Esh's and we're gonna try and see what we can find because her and I love a good deal so it should be really awesome but I utilize those discount stores to the fullest especially when it comes to shelf stable items like this because you can get something at such a discounted price and I know someone is going to ask because they always do in these videos why would you stock up if you know that you're going to have your discounted 
grocery store at your disposal. And you know, I've thought about that in the past, but there's often times that I go to Esh's and there isn't, you know, any food to be had. I mean, there's some here and there, but it's not what I'm looking for. So it's not always going to be this stop of confidence. I'm not going to go there and buy something just for the sake of buying it. You know, I go there specifically for certain items and sometimes they're not. And I think that's something to think about. A lot of people have this confidence when we talk about food shortage that, well, if this store doesn't have it, I'll go here. Well, if that store doesn't have it, I'll go to a restaurant or this, this, and this. And I don't think they think of what could be a simple solution. And that would be to buy a two pound bag of rice at a discount store for under a dollar or what have you and have it on hand in the event that you can't afford that inflated price. And a lot of people talk about, you know, the confidence of their wallet and the finances that they've saved up. And I think that's phenomenal that you have that confidence, but you never know what this life is going to throw at you. My goodness, these last four years will tell you that. So I feel like it's important to be prepared. I have been singing it from the rooftops for three years. This pantry has saved us in more ways than one and there's so many ways to go about this. So again, I am hoping that these next couple of years will change and I think they can change if we have some people that just find it in their hearts to take a stand for what you truly believe in and just do some more research. At the end of the day, if something doesn't sound right, I implore you to do more research. That is really where this journey started for me. It was the dig deeper mentality that couldn't possibly be true. Dig deeper. And sometimes, you know, it's true, but nine times out of 10, that big buzzword media article that you get scared about is probably not factual. I think that's all I wanted to talk about really, that food shortage. I wanted to know if you saw that sign. I want to know your thoughts on the supply chain issue and how it might be affected by this trucking, I, I don't know, standoff? I don't know what to call it because it's, it's pretty incredible. They are doing everything they can to, I guess, uh, get this guy to not run. And who knows? There are so many people that say there's not going to be an election, but I don't know. Honestly, I don't know my thoughts on it. I feel like I'm speechless, but I've been talking your ear off because I am uneasy about the future, but I also have my faith and I have a positive community here. And just know if you're ever feeling like this, well, I just spilled that everywhere, uh, but just know that if you're ever feeling like this, turn to this community. There's always someone positive in the comments just doing, you know, awesome things. I, I just find so much positivity when I look down there and I see just conversations happening about how someone can help someone. They, I, what I'm trying to say is there's not really any gatekeeping in this prepping community. And I think that's awesome because oftentimes there there is a bit, you know, you see people saying you have to prep one way or you're not gonna survive. I'm ex-military and this is not the way to prep. And thank you to all service members out there just let, letting you know that I fully support you. But that's a terrible attitude to have. You can't go around talking to people like that. You have to be a productive, positive member of society at least once in your life. So don't come on the page and tell people that they are not prepping in the proper way or they're not going to survive. That's a horrible way of thinking. And I think people get really turned off by the prepping community because of that. If I, again, had a dollar for every time someone said that to me, I would be pretty wealthy and I could buy us all some bunkers to hang out in. But yes. I'm going to end this on a positive note. I have all my Mylar stocked up here and a whole pound of rice basically sitting on my carpet here. And all I need to do is put some oxygen absorbers into there. The smaller bags get one, the bigger bags get two, although the bigger bags could probably stand for just one. I just like to be extra safe. I try and get most of the air out of those bags and then I seal them, label them, and go from there. It's really not that big of a thing. I will do one for you here. 
had people in the past say it has to be taught it has to be to whatever's in there and no it doesn't that's not true so don't listen to them but anyways put your label on there and then do the date whenever you did the mylaring and then you have some food storage so i have them in here and then i put them in these tractor supply five gallon buckets and then i take a gamma lid and put that on top of there and then i put a little post-it on top of the gamma lid of what is actually in that bucket and that seems to help I like these buckets because they are a little heavy, but they are easy to grab and go if you need to. And you can use these buckets to put, you know, whatever you want in them. But I find that putting a variety of different items in the buckets are good because they serve as a protection for what's inside it and you can easily grab and go. So friend, I hope you are wonderful wherever you are in the world. Thank you for sticking by me here on this channel. As always, stay adventurous, stay creative. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye. save me no and don't come running to blame me mm. from miles away i can tell that something's off